All right, so I was recording a code review and I did the thing that I do sometimes, which is giving advice that is just generally helpful to everything, not just that particular code review. So in this video, we're gonna go over why includes sometimes give you errors, like when you use hash include in C++. We'll take like a deeper look at how it works in the first place and how we can you know make sure that it works. Because I remember that this was something that like I used to struggle with when I was a beginner as well. So hopefully it's gonna be helpful to you guys. And the rest of this code review, which by the way is a Pac-Man game, will come out later this week. I think this is a super common error. Um, and that is, I typed in hash include, uh, I put in my file name and it can't find it. Why is everything so difficult in C++? So let's actually talk about this. So first and foremost, in C Sharp, we have something called using, and then we usually specify some sort of namespace. So like, you know, you'd write something like using system. And then in Java, we have a similar thing, but kind of with packages. And if you kind of import like system, for example, as a package, then all the classes are kind of available to you here. And the same with like using in C Sharp. That's because those languages are a little bit more advanced in the sense that every like, I guess, like symbols, so like classes, like functions, variables, whatever, they kind of exist within a namespace and that namespace, like the compiler is aware of that itself, kind of like internally. It just knows that, okay, there's a class called like, you know, timer. I know that that exists. It exists in this particular like namespace. So therefore, if that namespace is at play and it's in the same kind of module, then of course I can just find that. And assuming that like the visibility checks out, meaning I have kind of access to it, then it's done. That job is done. C++, a little bit more primitive. When you type in hash include, what it is doing is it is looking up this file from a particular file path, which is actually what you've specified. This is actually a file path. And then it's just pasting in the contents. So what we kind of want it to do is take this and like do that. Because you can see that if I just paste that in right now, it actually fixes all the errors. Like we still need to know what SDL is, but other than that, it fixes all of the errors, like all of the kind of timer class related errors. So that's what we're trying to do. It's just that obviously we don't want to go around pasting this in every kind of file, every CPP file that uses this timer class, because that would be really, really annoying if we then decided to actually add another function or rename something. We'd have to go through all the files manually and do that. So instead we take advantage of the preprocessor, which is capable of just including it from a single source. That's kind of the benefit. And so because it this is a file path, you can't just like, you know, be like, you know, import timer or using timer or whatever. You actually have to make sure that the compiler knows how to find this file. Now I do have a video about header files. I'm pretty sure I hopefully talk about this there, but I'll have it linked up there. It's quite an old video, but it should still be like relevant and helpful. But basically what will happen is there's two different ways of kind of including files. You have these angular brackets and then you have these quotes. Now quotes actually do the same thing as angular brackets plus more. So this is actually a little bit more restrictive because what this will do, what these quotes will do is first and foremost, they will try and evaluate the path that you've typed in here. Now I say path because of course it could be something like this, you know, like that could be a directory. Like it is a full path. I just happen to have the file name here alone. But what it will do is it will first try and evaluate this path relative to the location of this actual file. And then if it doesn't find it there, it will look at the compiler include directories, meaning that inside our project settings, we have inside C++ general, we have like additional include directories specified here and these I mean, there's another place you can put it. You can go C++ directories and then put it into uh, like include directories, external include directories. It's all kind of the same thing. But the point is you're telling the compiler, hey, this is a directory. So you can look there. And of course the compiler, like this is MSVC, Visual Studio, it will have its own kind of library include directories, which is how things like, uh, you know, CMath, String, you know, all of these kind of, uh, you know, C++ header files that are part of the library, that's how they work. They're the same as any other file. Like if I right click on CMath and go to document here, um, if I look at where this is, like this is located, you know, in C program files, Microsoft Visual Studio 2022, blah, 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 in MSVC inside this kind of version and then include and then CMath, right? So it's a header that's actually located kind of in the C++ library that belongs to the compiler we're using to build this project. That's where it comes from. And it's able to access it just because that directory where it's located is kind of known to the compiler. And if you use, well, either of these kind of styles, it will 
kind of go to that compiler include directory. So what we've learned here is this will do, first it will do kind of relative and then it will do the compiler, right? Whereas this just does the compiler and that's it. So hopefully that kind of clears it up a little bit. Now that we know that, hopefully the reason why this is an error should be really, really easy to debug. It's clearly the fact that this file is not located in the same directory as this file. So we know where timer.cpp is because we can hover our mouse over it and it will tell us that it's in pacman slash timer.cpp. Now, if we hover our mouse over this, it's in headers timer.cpp, right? So there, it's in a different directory. And the reason why this happened is because I just made the file through Visual Studio here and clearly, like, I mean, it just put it into Pac-Man and I didn't really bother, like, making sure it was in the right directory or whatever. It just wound up in two different directories. You can also just right-click on this and go to open containing folder. Uh, you can just see where the file is right and if you do the same thing with like this guy then you well you can see that they're obviously like in two different directories this guy's in code review pacman this one's in the code, code review pacman headers so how do we fix this now another really easy way to see this is if you go to pacman over here in visual studio it's just full on visual studio tutorial um we have this show all files button very 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 important because what you're seeing here is not a real directory structure these are called filters and what they are, like you can make filters, like lol, here's a filter. Yeah, this is not a folder on disk. It's just like a filter, kind of like gr group of files, if you will, that's actually stored inside this pacman.vcxproj.filters file, right? So that's kind of what contains that. In fact, if we look at this, let's just open in WordPad. <laughs> it's in WordPad, that's funny. Um, you can see that like we have these kind of, hey, there's a filter called header files, and this is kind of like this, this is like the actual file and this is like the filter that it's kind of under, right? So um, that's kind of all, all it really is. So what you need to do is make sure that if you actually want to see the directory structure and see all of these files as they appear, and the critical thing here is that these filters, yeah, obviously this doesn't care about them because this is based on actual physical files that you're including. So what I see often as well is people will try and match this up. They'll be like, okay, well, I'm in the source directory. So let me go back and then into like the header files directory, right? Which is what this is. Um, and then it still doesn't work. And of course the reason why it doesn't work is because these aren't real folders and this is real life. You know, this the way this include works. And this is not real life, this is a dream, this is fake. And so what you can do is you can press this show all files mode, which takes you out of the dream world into the real world. And now you actually see relative to this project. So again, this project will have a physical file on disk and relative to that, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing the, the project kind of directory. It's right here. And you can see what files are included. All of these things with this kind of uh, red, like stop sign type thing, whatever it is. Uh, those are all files that are not included in the project. So I can right click on them and hit include if I want. Uh, and similarly, I can right click on these guys and hit exclude and suddenly this file won't be compiled anymore and it won't be part of like search or whatever. It it'll, won't be part of the solution or well, this specific project actually. So now I can see that here's my timer.cpp in my root directory and then here are the rest of the headers. So what I can do from here is I can just simply click and drag it and put it into this headers directory. That's probably the easiest way to do it because then you don't have to like if I did it just in Windows Explorer I then have to like it wouldn't be able to find the file because obviously the the Visual Studio project expects it to be in a certain directory you've moved it so you'd have to kind of you know re reset that up um, now speaking of which obviously this is the headers directory so we probably wouldn't really expect it to be there but you can see that that does fix it now because they are in the same directory now what if we wanted it to work in this directory like main.cpp well you can see what what has happened in main.cpp, we just have headers, slash, and then like whatever. Um, so what that means is that if we wanted it to work the same way, we could drag it back here and then just make sure that we do headers slash timer.hpp and there we go, everything works. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.